Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Lunch and Learn. I'm Lauren Smith with the International Franchise Association, and we have a great 30 minutes lined up for you. Before we begin, I would like to let everyone know that we are recording today's webinar and we'll make it available later this evening on community.franchise.org. If you have any questions for today's speakers, please add them to the chat box and they'll be addressed towards the end. Today's topic is how technology is solving today's labor shortage. Here to provide today's discussion is Lauren Austin, Employee Relations Manager at Brummett Restaurant Group, Phil Sofio, Franchise Owner at Express Employment Professionals, and Moderator Chastity Jensen, Sales Director at Pandalogic. Thank you all for joining us today, and thank you, Pandalogic, for sponsoring today's Lunch and Learn. I'll go ahead and turn things over to you, Chastity. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Lauren. I appreciate it. We appreciate you having us. I'm certainly excited to uh, do this panel today and um, you know, talk through how technology has helped with um, today's labor shortage. And uh, my name is Chastity Jensen, as Lauren mentioned. I am the Director of Sales here at Pandalogic. Uh, I've been here for about two years, but I've been in the HR tech space for uh, about a decade and a half. Um, so uh, all the way from sourcing toward the middle of the funnel. Um, Lauren, Bill, I'd love for you guys to take a moment and talk a little bit about your experience and your background, and then we'll jump into today's session. Yeah, definitely. So my name is Lauren Austin. Um, I started with Brummett Restaurant Group um, back in 2020. We are an Arby's franchise with 65 locations right now. Um, actually, when I joined this team, I actually came on as their office administrator and they had nothing in place for recruiting. So, um, you know, all we did was occasional posting on Indeed. And so I, I kind of saw my end there and totally took over the whole um, recruiting platform. I put in a full circle um, recruiting cycle for everybody and I oversee all of the onboarding um, and hiring at all of our locations. So I have actually taken our staffing percentage from 70% to 91% over the last two years during the pandemic, which is huge. Um, but with the help of Panda Logic and another technology vendor, Our Work, we have really been able to solidify um, our staffing. So yeah, I'm excited to be here and I appreciate all of you for joining. Great. Thank you so much, Lauren. Uh, Bill. Yeah, my name is Bill Sofio. I'm the owner of Express Employment Professionals and the specialized recruiting group here in Charlotte. Uh, I was in consumer products for probably 20 years and uh, opened up these franchises uh, 11 years ago uh, here in the Charlotte area. And we are, um, we do uh, staffing for everything from light industrial on up through uh, professional IT, accounting and finance, construction management, and everything in between. And uh, it has been a, um, a very interesting couple of uh, couple of years, as it has for everybody. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, let's jump in. I appreciate the introductions. Um, you know, I imagine a lot of the questions that we'll talk through today are top of mind for everyone on this call. Um, and Lauren, let's start with you. You know, you had mentioned that uh, when you joined, when you first joined from at Restaurant Group, that you know, there were some changes that you made uh, immediately. Tell us a little bit what it was like before, right? Before um, you, know, you really introduced recruitment tech into your process and um, some of the struggles that you went through. Yeah, um, for the most part, a lot of our stores really relied on foot traffic for a lot of their applications. Um, you know, we would occasionally post on Indeed for, you know, problematic stores or really just rely on that career page from corporate Arby's to kind of funnel in um, a lot of our applications, but for the most part, we didn't really have any even advertising going towards hiring. So when that pandemic hit and our lobbies closed and we had to, you know, lay off quite a bit of people, it really became a challenge because we didn't have any way to even communicate that to them what their, our benefits are or anything like that. So um, it, it was just tough. And so once the pandemic hit, our staffing just dropped down. So I really took over um, like our Indeed platform and was able to throw a lot more postings on there for both, you know, crew and general managers. And then we started incorporating some more technology and even just local advertising, like bag stuffers, things like that, just to get our benefits in front of people and to let them know that we were hiring. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to come back to that in just a second. But Bill, let's, let's go to you for a minute. Tell us a little bit about what struggles were like for you before recruitment tech really became central to your process at Express. Yeah, so uh, uh, before before technology became such a uh, an important part of what we do, it was a um, uh, it was an inefficient uh, 
process where because we re recruit for so many different roles um, and having to find people with so many different skill sets, we had to do a lot of different activities, everything from yard signs, job fairs, apartment complexes, churches, on and on. And so not only was it inefficient, it was also expensive. I had to take the, our staff and run our staff around to all these places. Um, and the applicant flow was, was terribly inconsistent. Um, and everything that we did was manual. Uh, there, there was, you, you felt like there was, if you didn't do it, it, it wasn't getting done. Um, and so we, we tried a whole, a whole bunch of uh, different tactics to, to get in front of people. Um, but in so doing, it was all us. It was all kind of the, the uh, as we call it, grassroots recruiting uh, on the on the street recruiting, and it was far more difficult than it was or than it is with uh, the advent of uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. Lauren, you had mentioned that uh, prior to the pandemic, um, you know, you guys had a lot of foot traffic into your stores, a lot of ways to connect with candidates that really sort of went away um, after the pandemic, and how. Talk us through how technology really helps you reconnect with those candidates. I mean, you gave some examples a moment ago, but I'd love for you to go a little bit deeper in that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so first of all, with Panda Logic, they have really helped us get our job postings to more job boards. So that's been one of the number one things that have helped us because before um, I would spend, you know, a solid week posting, you know, 64 job postings on Indeed. And that's only Indeed. And that took up, you know, like a full three days of my workload. And so with Panda Logic, we're able to get in front of Indeed, Talru, ZipRecruiter, Monster, all at the same time without me having to post, you know, individual jobs. So that already like automatically freed up like a whole 30 hours of work for me each, you know, each billing cycle pretty much. But then the other piece that really helped us was we ended up partnering with this upcoming technology platform as well called Our Work, and they really focused on re-engagement with post applicants and also um, just like campaigns. So that let us, you know, Panda was feeding us the applications and then Our Work was coming back and reconnecting with those employees and sending them, um, you know, we would do like mass campaigns like, hey, we're hiring for summer. And we would contact like 100,000 past applicants in the span of two months and get all of those um, names back in front of the general manager. So that was a huge portion and it kind of completed that cycle for us. Um, and now we are starting to use our work as well for um, like post engagement hiring. So touch points, things like that. Um, and they'll kind of shoot a text to an employee and, and say like, you know, it's your first 15 days with us, how's everything going? So it's just helping keeping that loop closed, which was such a challenge before. It was definitely tough. And also um, with the pandemic, you know, there was a lot of things that changed. We started offering new benefits like free meals and things like that, that our employees before didn't know about. And they also, you know, we started doing like referral programs and things like that. So having these pieces of technology to be able to tell them that we are now offering these programs was huge because otherwise we would have lost out on, you know, I mean, it saves so much money connecting with people who used to work for you before. So it's definitely interesting, definitely a huge change from before, so. Yeah, so it's safe to say that it had a pretty significant impact on not only expanding your talent pool, but also on your candidate experience and your employee experience, right? Yes, 100%, yeah. Yeah, so, so Bill, same question to you. Um, you know, I know that you had a lot of kind of boots on the ground, grassroots efforts to to get candidates in the door. Um, help, just talk through how technology has really helped you reconnect or perhaps even expand that talent pool. Yeah, so the, uh, we use uh, texting apps, we use uh, email apps, uh, Facebook and LinkedIn are, are primarily the, uh, the outbound. Once we've collected who the, who the available candidates are, uh, then we have a whole mechanism to stay in touch with them. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we, we were taking for granted, uh, I think COVID actually helped us uh, re-engage with our very own database, right? We've been open for 11 years. We have a lot of people in this database and we used all this technology to then reconnect with them, uh, 
particularly and frankly, since they were they were home and some if they weren't part of an essential business, we were we were in touch with them uh, quite frequently. And uh, it really helped us re-engage with people that we had, you know, inadvertently lost touch with uh, people we have placed three, four, five years ago that we wanted to re-engage with. And um, it really made a big difference in terms of getting uh, the our pool of applicants to a much better uh, a much better place, and and technology as well. During COVID, for us, we had hundreds and hundreds of people working at the time when COVID shut down, and uh, they were looking to us for for direction and communication, and you know what the heck's going on, and is the business I'm working at an essential business, and if it is, when I show up, what do I have to wear, and all these all these things. So we accelerated our our um, communication process to out of necessity um, to uh, uh, to be able to communicate to these folks during a during a crazy crazy time. So um, uh, yeah, the technology has frankly has been a, a game changing so much so that it forced us to do. Uh, it forced our organization to do um, online onboarding. So you had mentioned Chastity about the the candidate experience. The candidate experience has changed for the better dramatically since the advent of COVID because um, now we don't have to drag everybody into the office to see them. We can do it all uh, all online um, electronically, you know, via the phone, Teams, uh, Zoom, and then the the paperwork is all done electronically. So in a strange way. Um, COVID forces to be better communicators with the uh, with the candidate audience. Yeah, well, it's interesting. It's, we hear that a lot. You know, it really has caused everyone to pause and just kind of take a moment to reset their perspective on what their candidates go through. Uh, how important would you say it is uh, for that quick communication to to candidates in the process? I mean, this is. I know um, we talked a little bit about this in other conversations, but you know, getting to that candidate very, very quickly uh, in your market. So I'd love for you to touch on that a little bit, because that seems to be something that uh, a lot of folks in the franchise space are struggling with. Yeah, I can definitely touch on that a bit um, for us, you know, in a, in a fast food franchise type situation, um, you know, a lot of hourly workers are on Snag-A-Job primarily. And if you have ever been on Snag-A-Job, you know just how easy it is to apply to you know, 10 different restaurants in the span of five minutes, honestly. Um, that's the goal is like, we're trying to make it as fast as possible. But as soon as that application hit your, you know, your file or whatever, it's already gone to the Bojangles, the McDonald's, the Sonic down the road. So, you know, one of our best practices that we put in is to have managers contact applicants within the first three hours of receiving that email, you know, the best of their ability. But I mean, it's amazing how quickly we lose people. So even with general manager hires, we'll make an offer and they accept somewhere else, you know, the next day. So it's really about staying on top of it, but without technology, how, how would we do it? You know, so it's definitely made a huge point. Like Bill said, the texting apps, we've even incorporated like mass texting capabilities, like to all of our employees, things like that, just to keep that communication flowing. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Bill, I'd love for your, to see your perspective. I know you're a little bit different industry when it comes to the types that you're hiring. So how has that impacted your, your side of the business? Yes. Yeah, so what, what you, had, you had asked earlier about the, the speed at which you have to communicate uh, in, in this market. And it's uh, funny, the, the, if you're not communicating quickly, whether you're a, whether you're a hiring person or the the owner of the company or someone looking to hire um you're losing candidates right now so you have to communicate really quickly to candidates um almost instantaneously otherwise they'll they're they have found another job they're somewhere they're off to something else or in this market they're they could be thinking that you're really not as interested as you as you sounded during the interview process so they move on um so if i can give one piece of uh, advice to everybody because we're we're basically professional matchmakers that's what we do and the the one piece of advice i would say is is if you have a candidate that you want to hire you have got to move quickly um and and to the to the technology point use any means at all that you can to connect with them 
uh, to make it happen. Otherwise, you're going to lose candidates, and it just makes the whole recruiting process that much more frustrating and difficult. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice, Bill. Um, you know, and that, that brings me to another another thought around scaling your business. I know that um, not only are you focused on getting to candidates quickly and being able to drive more uh, to your business, but how, what has that impact been like on your internal workloads and your ability to scale? So I'd like for you to touch a little bit on that as well as the change management process, because I can imagine uh, anyone in our audience today that's implemented technology has certainly given plenty of consideration to what that change, change management load would look like. Um, so the the scaling, what how this has all worked for us is, is that uh, the technology has made us a whole lot more efficient. Um, we too, as a shameless plug, we, we too use Pando Logic and we do so very happily because now uh, we only have to post in one place to get access to all of these different uh, websites that we frankly would have not been on, known about or paid for. Um, and even if we did, it would have all been a manual process. So the, the, the beauty of, of the Pando platform is, is I, can po I can post jobs in one place and it gets, it, it gets sent out uh, a whole bunch of uh, to a whole bunch of different sites that we would have never we would never would have never thought about in terms of scaling. Then, um, without question, this helps us scale because the um, uh, candidates are the lifeblood of our business. If if uh, it's made us a whole lot more efficient in the sourcing process, because we're more efficient on the sourcing process, my recruiters can interview more people. When we interview more people, we make better hiring decisions. We make better matches for our client companies. And frankly, we just have, uh, it's a bigger pool. You make better decisions when you have more people that you can uh, choose between for specific skill sets. Um, and the last thing is, is, is in terms of scaling is uh, if I have a great candidate, because now I have a bigger pool of people to choose from, uh, I can market those candidates. I can call companies that maybe ha haven't called us uh, about an open job, but because I know the skill sets that they need, and I, I now have this skill set uh, because of the use of this technology, um, I can call them up and find out if they're hiring. And, and inevitably, in this market, they're they're looking for that skill set. So it has it has really helped us to uh, to scale and become far more efficient in our in our recruiting process. It's it's really been a, a game changing difference. Yeah, that also yeah, I can only imagine. It's also playing off what Bill said a, a bit about scaling as well is with us, um, we have an in-house construction department as well. So we build our own Arby's and during the pandemic, we were still continuing to open new stores and we started getting into demographics that were so rural and so hard to reach that we had to delay the openings of these stores months out because we couldn't staff them. And so since, you know, adopting PandaLogic and our work and Snag a Job and all of those technologies, that hasn't happened again. We've been successful in our openings and beyond just eliminating the admin work, like that is huge to our bottom line, you know, so it's been very nice. Yeah, I think that you bring up such a wonderful point, Lauren. I mean, just the fact that you're able to keep the stores open due to having your staff in place in a timely manner is worth its weight in gold, right? So it's not always just about volume, but how quickly you're able to, uh, you know, attain that volume and, and keep it there. So um, that really wraps our questions for, uh, for today and for our panel. Um, Lauren, Bill, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us and your insight. Um, just through this process, I've learned a lot. Um, so I can imagine the same as for our audience as well. We do want to open it up to questions now. Um, I'm going to turn things back over to, to Lauren um, to close us out. Awesome, thank you. Um, so it looks like we have a few questions. So the first one is, have you been able to reduce time when it comes to administrative tasks? If so, what has that allowed you to focus on? Well, for us just alone, um, since I kind of created this recruiting position, um, one thing that's really helped us is I'm now able to focus on retention. Um, Sorry, there is somebody outside. I hope you guys can't hear that. Um, if you can, I'm so sorry. Like TV. 
<laughs> um, but it's, it's really helped me to be able to focus on retaining and following up with our current employees, which is something that totally fell off the face of the earth during the pandemic because every waking hour of my workday was sourcing, calling, setting up interviews. And now I am able to focus on revamping our entire training program and focus on, you know, things that are affecting everybody in the company and not just our new employees, which is, you know, also worth its weight in gold. So. Yeah. And our, our process is, uh, uh, has become much, much more uh, efficient and our administrative time spent recruiting is, is, a fraction of what it was, um, some of which I mentioned earlier around, I, I only have to post jobs in one place um, and it reaches a whole lot more people than we would have otherwise done. That's number one. Number two, it keeps my recruiters in the office um, as opposed to going out, running around, putting signs up and, and going to churches and all these other things. So it, so from a, an efficiency standpoint, an administrative standpoint, it is uh uh, it's made a big difference and, and made us a whole lot more efficient to do the the things in our business that, that make a difference. Awesome. So we have a couple more questions. Does it still make sense to have a second interview process for candidates or should you try to hire immediately? My opinion on this is, is it's totally fine to have a second interview process for candidates. Uh, we see this quite often uh, with our client companies, and and even in this market where it's crazy quick how things are happening with candidates, it's fine. You just have to be honest with them about when the second interview is and don't miss it, and then be ready to make a decision. Um, what we see too often is is people will commit to a second interview, cancel the second interview, move it out a couple of days, um, take, do the second interview, and then have a uh, and then not have an offer ready and the candidate's gone. And so, the, so the second interview is fine. Uh, you just have to stick to a plan and be ready once you're done with the second interview. Awesome. Um, the next question is, would you suggest a different or streamlined interview process for returning former employees? Yeah, I would definitely suggest that, um, especially if, you know, for us specifically, we have hired a lot of new employees through or past employees through the program Our Work. And so a lot of the times um, general managers already remember those candidates and can just simply call them and ask if their availability has changed. And a lot of the times the new hire paperwork can even be sent over on the phone call. Um, of course, that's different for like salary positions like assistants and general managers. Um, but I, I would definitely say that at this point, when you're getting past employees who already know how to do the position or already trained, you should probably hire them as quickly as you can um, instead of doing you know, several rounds, depending on who that person is and why they may or may not have left your company, so. Awesome. Uh, the next question is with Pando, does it help speed up the process in terms of interviewing? I'm sorry, does it help what? speed up the process in terms of interviewing? Uh, for us, it doesn't speed up the interview process, but it gives you greater, uh, greater and more consistent applicant flow, um, which frankly, I, I can't think of a business where that wouldn't benefit you if you're going through the, the applications or the resumes that come in. Um, um, because again, you, you can interview more people, the more people you interview, the better decisions you make about hiring. Um, and so I, it's, it's, it's a huge benefit. Yeah. And also using Pando in tandem with other technology sources as well can help that really well, because, you know, you have the higher scale of people coming in the higher applicant flow, but if you are using like talent roof or something at the same time that can automatically schedule those interviews for you you already have three interviews lined up without having to even lift a finger, which I think is, you know, a really amazing thing in 2022, honestly. So. Lauren, that's got to help your hiring managers out a lot. I mean, because okay. they're likely at, you know, at the store level wearing a lot of different hats. Um, so being able to lean in, yeah, yeah, they just don't have the time. Yeah. So, I mean, technology has really shaped their job too. And especially like it's so disheartening too when you don't have that many applicants and the few that you have have already accepted a position down the road. So having these 
these things in place to keep them engaged and you know in communication with them it's definitely huge so awesome um we have another question where do you see programmatic headed and how do you hope it will help you down the road Ooh, that's tough um i think it'd be really interesting to see you know a vendor like Panda Logic kind of merge with an onboarding platform in some way to just kind of automate even more so. But I personally don't know how that could happen, but just getting to more job boards and, and a, a faster way, maybe even incorporating like AI chatbots or something to keep in constant communication, that would be really interesting. But I honestly, I don't know, I'm pretty impressed with how far it's come just in the last two years, so. Yeah, and I would agree. I think uh, programmatic is uh, is going to be a critical part of a lot of, of marketing and recruiting uh, spends. It's certainly going to be for us. Uh, it it keeps us more agile. It gets our name in front of more uh, candidates and companies that we wouldn't have otherwise been in front of. And and it's simpler. Right? It's just it, it's so administratively simple um, uh, than than the old you know, than before all of this existed when, when you were doing a whole lot more things manually. So I think it's here to stay and they're going to be a big part of everyone's spend. Great. Awesome. Well, it looks like those are all the questions um, that have come through. So thank you so much. This is excellent content and excellent feedback from all of you. We really do appreciate it. Again, this webinar was recorded and along with the presentation deck will appear on our website early this evening. That'll appear on community.franchise.org. Thank you very much again to Chastity, Bill, Lauren, and the Pandologic team. And again, thank you to everyone for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and healthy. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.